What's going on, Trevor? My dude? What's up, my brother? How you doing, man? Blessed, black, and highly favored. How are you? Sir? I love that. I love that. Yes, I'm sir. I'm doing great. I want to know all about you, though. Let's let's start with the uh, the most pressing question that I have. You moved into my old building, my studio. Yeah. Is it treating you well? Are you paying the rent? What's going on there? <laughs> I'm not paying the rent, but I hope we're doing enough to keep the lights on. <laughs> you know, um, it's a beautiful place. We call it. The, I don't, did you have a name for it? When no. Was that? Okay, we named it the Happy Accident. Oh, the and, Happy Accident. Yeah, because you know Stephen Colbert, he's an executive producer on the right. show, and he always talks about how his career was a happy accident, and us ending up in that building was a happy accident. And um, my showrunner Rachel Edwards, her company is actually called Happy Accident LLC, which I didn't know until me and Stephen were having a conversation on set, and she happened to be standing by, and then she came over and let us know that her company is called The Happy Accident it's LLC. It's like a cosmic... Yeah, a lot of divine be. alignment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like Definitely. that. I like that. Definitely. Well, um, congratulations on the show. Thank you, sir. I mean, I'm enjoying watching you do your thing. I'm watching you grow every single week. Like, just You know, you know what I enjoy about it is this. Um, it feels like the show is very much Charlemagne in that it is you molding yourself to the space. Yeah, it's very much Lennard. Oh, know? that's interesting. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Yeah, because I think you Who know, is Lennard? Well, Lennard is uh, the person that Charlemagne was kind of created to protect, you know, because Lennard is the kid that grew up in Monk's Corner, South Carolina, who uh, had a lot of issues that he might not have uh, dealt with. So he created the character of Charlemagne to protect him. So now as I'm... Um, I'm older, it's like, yo, you can't really hide Lennard. You can't hide Lennard when, you know, he's a father of, of, of four beautiful daughters, and, you know, you can't really hide Lennard when Lennard's been in therapy for the past six years, and Lennard has written two books and given you so much of himself, and it just feels easier to be Lennard at wow, this point. that's inspiring, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like I should also tell the people my real name. What's your real name, Trevor? No, my Tamsanga. It's time for me to come No, that's true, people. though. <laughs> no, because you're from South Africa. So that, that, don't... Trevor's a name I made up, people. I, I am... believe him. <laughs> is this true? No, I actually wish I actually wish that was true. Oh, okay, but, okay, okay. but you know what I love about this is like this is this is what I'm enjoying about the show and okay. about your journey as a human being is like, uh, let's be honest, hip hop and mental health have not exactly been aligned. There's, there's, there hasn't been like a culture of like yeah. you know this is how hard I am and this is when I go to my therapist. That hasn't exactly been in that world. <laughs> when did you decide that you know what therapy shouldn't be a secret thing that I that I conduct in a room once a week or whatever? This needs to be in the open. Yeah, I was going, I, I thought I was going crazy. Cause you know, for me, I had all the success, right? Like, you know, New York Times bestselling book, nationally syndicated radio show, everything was going great. But right. I literally was not happy. You know what I mean? Oof. So it's like I was dealing with like extreme bouts of depression and the anxiety started to get worse. And I remember actually being on vacation and I had this moment of peace where I didn't feel any of that. And I hadn't felt that in probably ever. Cause I've dealt with panic attacks my whole life. so. I literally was like, how can I feel like this all the time without going on vacation? And that's when I started the journey, probably like in 2016, mm -hmm. of like going to therapy. And at the same time, I started, you know, writing my book. So that was, a, I was peeling back so many different layers, starting in therapy, starting with writing the book. And it would be like, it wouldn't be authentic of me to go on the radio and talk about anything else other than what I was going through. Yeah, it's been, it's become a big part of your, I mean, your, your Instagram is do. dedicated to it, your, your show. I mean, the God's Honest Truth. I mean, yeah, you're talking episode. about racism, you're talking about, you know, the Democrats, you're talking about politics. And then it's like, oh, we're doing a thing on mental health. Listen, man, God, black women in therapy are my, my life sources. <laughs> those, those, those are my sources of power at this point in my life. You know what's crazy? I got Wolverine tattooed on my arm, right? And I got this tattoo when I was 17 years old uh -huh. in South Carolina where tattoos were illegal. This dude named T. Willis did it. I don't even know if T. Willis is still alive, but salute to T. Willis. He did this tattoo on my arm, and I always gravitated towards Wolverine because of his healing powers. I didn't know what the hell that was when I was 17. I just thought that it was cool that this dude could just bounce back right. from anything. Now, at this, age of my, at this point in my life, I'm sitting back like, that's all I want to do. I've dedicated my life to not only my own healing journey, right. but helping other people heal. You're trying to be an emotional Wolverine. Emotional? <laughs> I mean, that's essentially what you're saying. Exactly. Right. 100%. Won't make the same money at the box office, but nah, nah, it nah, will nah, be nah. a fulfilling journey. I, I, exactly. Yeah. He's, he's bleeding to death, but he feels good inside. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, the God's Honest Truth. Yes. I love the title. Thank you. You, you had uh, one of Biden's people on the show. Cedric Richmond, senior yes. advisor to Joe Biden. Uh -huh. You know, you, you grilled him. A lot of people love the question, for instance, what has Joe Biden done for black people and since he came yeah. seeing that black people are the reason that he's in the seat that he's in now. Well, I'm actually just concerned because I'm an American citizen and I really do feel like, you know, the death of democracy is at our doorstep. Simply because there's things that, you know, the Democratic Party could be doing, in particular the Biden administration, that they're not... Such as? Doing. I mean, number one, you, you got to get rid of the filibuster so you can properly govern, right? Um, I think you got to prosecute 
you know, the people who attempted a coup on this country on January 6th. Not just the, the, the people who physically tried to do it, but the politicians and stuff that may have been behind it, you know. Um, I think you have to pack the Supreme Court. Like, you absolutely positively have to, especially when you see, you know, the Supreme Court. Yo, the Supreme Court is literally holding up Handmaid's Tales laws in Texas in regards to abortion. So now, I mean, people would come with the opposite argument, and then they go, like, when does the swing end in America? Because then Mitch McConnell goes, all right, you do this now, and then as soon as I get into power, Charlemagne, I'm going to flip this around, and I'm going to double-pack the court, and then you're going to see what happens to you. Well, does it matter? Because if you actually do what you're supposed to do by your people, you might not ever have to worry about being out of power. Right now, <laughs> right now, they have some real concerns. Matter of fact, no, they're going to lose in 2022. Let's mm -hmm. just call it what it is. You know that. They're going to lose in 2022 because they haven't fulfilled any of the promises that they said that they were going to fulfill. And the fact that they could, they actually could do it, right? When you see that as Joe Manchin and uh, Kirsten Cinema, or Kristen Cinema blocking it's Biden's Kirsten, agenda, I'm Kirsten, Kirsten. Kirsten. Well, whatever, Cinema, you know, God bless right. her. But it's those two people blocking Biden's agenda and they're Democrats. What does that say to the people that voted for them? Like, we put y'all in office to help our interests, but now you got two of your own blocking your interests? Yep. Trump would never allow that. That's you true. think Trump would That's allow true. two people in his party? Oh, he party? Allow anybody. Oh, come on. He'd have nicknames for them. <laughs> he'd be mad at you for correcting um, him on, his, on her first name. Oh, he'd be out there. He'd come be like, on. slow cinema, come on. slow cinema. Come on, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm concerned. <laughs> okay. I really okay. am concerned. Well, uh, I, I would tell people to watch your show, but I haven't been invited to it, so... I would love to have you on. Well, I don't know. You say I, I don't know how the Comedy Central protocol works. I don't... Oh, I'm, so I'm now shocked I'm here. Now there's protocol? <laughs> I don't... When has there ever been protocol? <laughs> you just texted me random things. Now there's protocol? <laughs> no, I'd love to have you on. I appreciate you. You're right. on the right page. My guy. Here. Thank you so much for being here. Yes, sir. All right. The God's Honest Truth with Charlemagne the God as Fridays at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central, and it streams on Paramount+. Plus. <laughs> 